Hello, welcome back to Data Leaps. In today's video, we're going to talk about one of the most successful and popular products on the planet, which is Excel. All roads lead to Excel. I get asked frequently how to connect Excel to Databricks, how to consume data in Databricks using Excel. Now, Databricks doesn't have a official Excel connector, which means you're going to have to find other ways to connect Excel to Databricks. There's currently three different ways to do this. Uh, one is a commercial add-on for Excel that supports Databricks. Since you have to buy a license for that, we will exclude that from this video. The second way is connecting Excel to Databricks through a Power BI semantic model. You can do access control in that as well from Unity Catalog. And then in the next video, we'll talk about connecting Excel to Databricks using ODBC connector. Cool, let's get started. Let's head over to my laptop. So in the simplest terms, I've got data about customers from an online service. And what I want to do is to consume this data in Excel. Really easily, I can now publish this table, or if you have all the tables within a single schema, you can publish all of the tables from a schema all together to a Power BI semantic model as well. In this case, we'll select this table and we'll select my Power BI workspace. We'll do direct query and OAuth. And we want to publish as a new data set. We'll publish it. As you can see, I'm not using Power BI desktop at all, just going directly from Databricks workspace to Power BI service. And now it says, blah, blah, blah. You need to configure data source credentials. We know that. So we're going to open this in Power BI. We are already in the settings for the semantic model. We'll go to the data source credentials. We'll edit it. Uh, because my Databricks instance is a AWS uh, instance. So it's using the Databricks multi-cloud connector, not the Azure Databricks connector. This means even if I'm using OAuth, I cannot toggle on the let report viewers use their own credentials connect uh, to connect to the Power BI data source. And I cannot use Unity Catalog to do access control from the end user. Now, in the next example, we'll show you how to do the access control bit. By the way, if you are using Azure Databricks and you do this publish to Power BI, it will automatically pick up the Azure Databricks connector, which means in here, when you do OAuth, you can have the let report user use their own identity to connect to data source. If you toggle that on, if you tick that box, the Power BI end user will be using their own identity to generate direct query to the Databricks instance, which means you can use Unity Catalog to do access control. But for Databricks on AWS, there's a way to do this as well. I'll show you in a little bit. But for now, let's just try to connect to this from Excel. So I'm going to open Excel and I'll open a blank workbook. And what I want to do is to go to data and I want to get data up from our platform, from Power BI. Normally you would need to sign in here. I already signed in. So I don't need to sign in again. And then I will choose the semantic model I just published. And it will see the fields that uh, as column names that I just published to Power BI. So I have all these uh, customer ID, like gender and uh, different fields I can now access to from Excel. So this is relatively straightforward in terms of connecting to Excel using Power BI semantic model. Now, quite unfortunately, this is in a pivot table format. So you're going to have to work, uh, you know, 
your analysis in pivot tables, but if you've been working with Power BI and Excel, this is quite normal to expect. Now, what if you are in Databricks AWS and you still want to use access control in Unity Catalog to control the user's access from Excel? You can do that as well, but you cannot use the publish to Power BI functionality. What you will need to do is to open Power BI Desktop. And then would you get data? Here you want to choose the Azure Databricks connector, not the Databricks connector. And here you need to get the server host name and HTTP pass from your SQL warehouse in Databricks. So we'll copy that over. Once you've done that, it's important to choose your query here if you want to control access to fine grain access control based on end user's identity. If you don't care about that, you can also just do import and get really good performance on your Power BI as well as the Excel access. So here we'll do a direct query and then we will need to find that table that we previously used in the example. Um, so we're going to find the schema. There we go. This is the table that we used to publish to Power BI. We will also use the same table to show you how to do fine grain access control. And here we'll just do a couple of columns just to show. We'll do customer ID and we'll do tenure as well. This is not the prettiest uh, visualization of build, but just to make a point. Um, now we can publish it to Power BI. You need to save it as an example. So we'll do Excel and we'll publish it. Now that the publish is successful, we can go to our workspace and look at the reports. You can see that it's published exactly the way we've intended. We can also look at the data source setting. So if we go to settings and we go to data source credentials, you can see this is using the not the multi-cloud, but the Azure Databricks connector, and it's using OAuth and letting report viewer use their own identity. So that's exactly what we want. The end user will pass down their credentials to Power BI. Power BI will pass it down to Databricks to query the data. Now, how do we do access control here? We need to define access control in Unity Catalog. So because I don't have another user to demo, I'm just going to do a value-based filter here. So in Unity Catalog, you can create functions and then set role filters um, for role level access control. So we're going to create a function to say that we're going to filter out tenure that's uh, smaller than five years. Um, in the example of Power BI, you see that our tenure is basically all over. What we want to do is to filter this out to less than five years. You can also do a row level access control based on different users, different groups, which is the normal setting. Because I'm demoing by myself, I don't have another user. I will just do a value based filter to show you how it works. Once I create a function, what I need to do is to basically set a role filter using that function on the tenure column. And once that's successful, you can see if I query this table, I shouldn't be able to see anything that's tenure for more than five years. And I expect this result to reflect in both Power BI and Excel. So if we go over to 
Power BI, again, this is on direct query and using SSL pass through for OAuth and the report viewers using their own identity to connect to their data source. So if I refresh this page, Voila, I don't see anything that is more than five years or more than four years. That's how I set the uh, row filter. And I expect the same exact thing to happen in Excel. So if I go over to Excel, if I go over to Excel, this is connecting to the previous data set. So I'm here, I'm going to connect again to the Excel SSO data set. So here I am connecting to the Excel SSO data set. And if I bring in tenure here, you see that it's no more than five years. And this is ex exactly how you do access control for both Power BI and Excel connecting to Databricks using a Power BI semantic model. In the next video, we'll go through how to do Excel connection to Databricks using ODBC connector. Thank you for watching Data Leaps. If you think the content is useful, please like and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it.